The world seeks after wealth and all that mammon offers, yet never is content, though gold should fill its coffers. I have a higher good. Content with it I'll be. My Jesus is my wealth. What is the world to me? For our daily prayer, we use the order of morning prayer found on page 235 in the Lutheran Service Book or page 024 in the middle section of Treasury of Daily Prayer. Let us pray. Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. As they heard these things, Jesus proceeded to tell a parable, because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom, and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minas, and said to them, Engage in business until I come. But his citizens hated him, and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him, saying, Lord, your mina has made ten minas more. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you have been faithful in a very little, 
you shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to him, And you are to be over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit, and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit, and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank, and at my coming I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the mina from him, and give it to the one who has ten. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten minas. I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. And when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's Word, we welcome Rev. Rob Rebo. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this morning's text, Jesus teaches us with a parable. The parable of the minas, or the pounds. In context, we've joined Jesus on his way to Jerusalem. He had just finished inviting Zacchaeus to come down from the sycamore tree. And following this parable, he will enter into Jerusalem with the fanfare of palms. The beginning of Holy Week, the week that will end with his trial, his suffering, and his death. Yet his followers have a very different set of expectations for Jesus as he enters into Jerusalem. Verse 11 makes it clear. They expect him to enter Jerusalem and establish his kingdom. And so Jesus teaches them. He teaches them with this parable about his kingship and about the end of time. Judgment Day. He calls his servants to account. Those who have done well are commended, and his enemies are condemned. Those two things in this parable are absolutely clear. At the end, some will be rewarded and others will be punished. But what about these three servants? Why did one of them suffer the same fate of the enemies? What is Jesus teaching us? In an explanation of the small catechism by Concordia Publishing House, the first question is this. What is Christianity? Christianity is life and salvation given by God in and through Jesus Christ. It's a fantastic answer. Because notice what Christianity isn't. Christianity is not death. Christianity is not dying and going to heaven, even though that is exactly what happens to Christians when they die. They get to go to heaven. They get to be with Jesus, their Savior. But the hope of the Christian goes beyond dying and going to heaven. The hope of the Christian is in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. But what about these minas? What does it mean that the one who has ten receives ten more, that the one who has five receives five more, and that the one who took his mina and saved it is condemned? Let's think about that for a moment. This one servant, this third servant, was he a bad man? We might even say that he's respectful or careful. He defers to this man of noble birth. He is given someone else's property, and he takes care of it. Takes it, and he carefully wraps it up in cloth, puts it in a safe place, and he plans to return it to this man of noble birth, unharmed, when he returns. How could this be a bad thing? What are these minas? To be honest, I can't say that I really know. There have been many suggestions over the years. I don't know exactly what these represent. But this I know for certain. Jesus is clearly the man of noble birth. He is, after all, the son of David, the son of God. And Jesus gives gifts. Jesus is the giver of life. 
he gives us physical life. We are born in this world. We live, we work, we eat. God pours out his blessings on all to the just and to the unjust. God gives good gifts. God also gives salvation. And what is salvation but more life? A new birth in the waters of holy baptism, forgiveness found in the very body and blood of Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. And as a wise teacher once wrote, where there is the forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Life. Life springing forth through the preaching of his word. Life outpoured through the work of the Holy Spirit. Life given to us who are born spiritually dead. Life. Abundant life, eternal life. Jesus gives life. And so, as our text this morning says, to the one who has, more will be given. And to the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. See, all three servants were given a gift by this man of noble birth. They all had virtue of their own. But the first two had something that the third did not. They trusted the noble man. Even though they surely knew that he was a hard man, a man who would reap where he did not sow, they were bold to use what he had given to them. But the third servant, he was afraid. He had no trust. And because he did not trust him, he also did not love this man of noble birth. The third servant took what was given to him, and he did what he thought was right. And so it was out of his own mouth at the end that he was condemned. If this parable makes you think about your gifts in life and the things that God has given to you, and how perhaps you have not invested them in the Lord's service as you should, That may not be an altogether bad thing. The law does have this effect on our lives. It opens our eyes to our sin. But if you do think this, please do not linger here too long. Do not lose sight of the greater narrative given to us in this parable. Do not lose sight of this man of noble birth, the son of David, the son of God, who has gone off to receive his kingship, to share his kingdom with us. He is the giver of good gifts. He is the one who gives life and salvation. Trust in him. Trust in Jesus. Jesus is the one who gave his life so that you might have life. Jesus is the one who gives us life in holy baptism, life in the forgiveness of sins. Jesus is the one who gives us life here and now and life there for eternity. Life and more life. Jesus forgives us. You see, in the end, those who trust Jesus No matter how much they have, Jesus will take it and double it. He gives them even more. He gives them life and salvation, all with the commendation, Well done, good servant. Well done. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we struggle here below with divisions among us, searching for peace among men, Remind us daily of the peace of heaven, purchased through the bloody death and triumphant resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit is one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us.
thank you for joining us for morning prayer. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you.